on this computer. Hello everybody, this is Barbara Drasga with the Bundle Masterclass and tonight we are going to share a ton of information about how to create bundles to sell online, whether you're mostly sell on Amazon, uh, but you can also use the concept of bundling to sell on your own website and to sell on uh, Etsy and eBay. So the concepts that you'll learn during this webinar, you can apply in different areas. So first of all, I wanted to welcome everybody. Uh, go ahead and check out the uh, bundlemasterclass.com. That's the, uh, the course that I have that opens uh, maybe four or five times a year. It's open right now. And um, if you've got any questions about bundling, go ahead and go to the Facebook page, my Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash groups slash deal diva. So it's facebook.com slash groups slash dealiva. And I promise you I've got a uh, freebie for you guys towards the end of this webinar. Uh, of course, to encourage you to stay on to the end, I'm going to give you a ton of content and then tell you a little bit about the Mumble Masterclass. And then I'm also going to give you something for free with no obligation whatsoever that you absolutely need to know in order to do bundles. Promise you. And it has something to do, hint, hint, with UPC codes. So I'm going to give you the solution to the UPC codes towards the end of the webinar. So we're just going to go ahead and get started here. We're talking about bundling for fun and profit. Uh, of course, you know, fun is great. I, I like making money and having fun doing it, which is why I put the fun part in there. My name is Barbara Drazga, clearly, and I've been selling online since 1996, and I've been selling on Amazon since 2015. I have a few different businesses, uh, some of which are on Amazon and some are completely unrelated to Amazon that I started before I even got to Amazon. So I've been self-employed for decades, and in fact, I don't even think I'm qualified to get a real job. Uh, the J-O-B in my world is, um, is just over broke, and uh, I, I wouldn't know how to work for somebody else. I'm so used to um, kind of doing my own thing and making my own hours and having freedom and making the money that I want to make uh, by building businesses. So tonight I'm going to teach you how to how to uh, incorporate in, uh, bundles. Now most of most of my products now on Amazon are bundles or a private label of some sort. And all bundling is, guys, is kind of private label and e easy private labeling, right? So you don't have to get a huge amount of quantity of you know, ship in a container from China to do bundling. Okay, so let's just get started. I'm going to go ahead and uh, and dig into the slides here that I made. And um, if you have any questions, ask them in the chat. Uh, better yet, I, I don't know that I'll get have time to get to the questions on this webinar, but better yet, go to the Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash deal diva, and ask them in there, and tomorrow I will answer everybody's questions. So here we go. I thought, here we go. There we go. Tonight, here's what we're going to cover. So the importance of owning your Amazon listing. Why is that a big thing now? Uh, you know, we, we all started with doing retail arbitrage pretty much when we started on Amazon. So we're gonna talk about why uh, the changes in Amazon and why it's more important than ever now and moving forward to actually own your listing on Amazon. Why is it important to do niche market research before you ever source a product? And I know this is kind of backwards uh, from what we were taught when we first entered the Amazon sellers community. We're taught to scan, 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 start with the product in mind. And my approach is I call it customer-centric research. Uh, and I brought that from other businesses I've had that were completely unrelated to Amazon before I even knew about selling on Amazon. Um, I, we always start with understanding our customer's market. So, importance of doing competitive research. Once you identify uh, niche markets, you have to find out who the players are in those niche markets, who your competitors are, what they're doing well, what they're not doing well. We'll talk a little bit about that. And then how to create an added value product. So not just throwing up a, uh, I don't know, a, a garlic press or something, because everybody else is doing it. Uh, once you understand who your customer is, then you can bring value to um, a set of products that they look at it and say, shut up and take my money. That's one of my favorite <laughs> phrases in the Bundle Masterclass. And you can go ahead and check out bundlemasterclass.com and uh, my bio's on there and course outline's on there and um, there's some free content on there you can download and you can enroll for the Bundle Masterclass there. So how to use your wholesale and factory direct, directory, uh, factory direct sourcing. So some of my wholesale, a lot of my wholesalers, um, not a lot I should say, Several of my wholesalers will actually, uh, I'll, I'll send them a couple of bundle items and they'll put it together in a box with the, the main product I'm getting from them and mail it into Amazon for me. Now, of course, that kind of relationship takes a little bit of time to build and grow and uh, there is information in the Bundle Masterclass about how to negotiate relationships like that 
so that uh, you can utilize your actual suppliers for your products to kind of act as your prep company. Not everyone will do it, but um, several. I was able to easily convince, I didn't even have to convince, offer several of mine to do it, and it's actually less expensive than a prep company. And I pay less in shipping overall. Uh, using wholesale and factory direct sourcing. So, you know, there are factories in the US, Mexico, China, Thailand, Canada. Uh, there are manufacturers everywhere. Uh, and you can also have a wholesaler who already has the connections with factories, just white label their own product with your product name on it. Uh, and that's a, a, cheap and, a cheaper and easy, a fast way to get smaller quantities of things instead of going directly to China or Mexico or Thailand or India is another place you can get products, okay. Elements of a winning listing. Now, I know this is a lot stuffed into one webinar, one hour webinar. So we're, we're going to give kind of the basics of all of these points, six points. We won't be able to dig too deep into it, but that's what the Bumble Masterclass is for. But I'm gonna give you a ton of content, so hang in there. Okay, so owning your Amazon listing, why is this important? So, you know, last year, 2016, we started seeing more and more inauthentic claims more um, sellers coming on this earlier this year, this was a huge issue. Sellers, uh, these fake sellers were finding access to these old, old, old dormant seller accounts. And uh, they would come on, change the, uh, they somehow hack into it, they change the bank information, they would jump on uh, thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of listings uh, and price their the, a listings product at like 90% off sell a bunch of stuff, get the first payment in two, you know, two weeks from then, and then shut down the account. And they would just lather, rinse, repeat that. So Amazon had a heck of a time. They're suddenly inundated by this, uh, this new thing, these new scammers, and you know, trying to corral that. It looks like it's a little bit more under control, but heck was that scary, right? Because my listings were hit. Every one of my listings had multiple of these fake sellers on it. Now I'm losing money, I'm losing sales, um, and, uh, yeah, it, and then I have, I'm, I'm investing time in, uh, uh, reporting these guys to Amazon. So it was a, it was a really scary, bad, surprising thing to happen. And that was just one of the things last year I sourced a pallet of Pokemon and it was right before Christmas. It was last summer. And this is when Amazon was starting to lock down brand registry, but they hadn't quite done it. They were in transition and I had scanned these Pokemon toys and from one of my wholesale suppliers, a pallet shows up, I scan them again to listing, and suddenly I'm restricted. So here I am with a pallet of these toys, I can't do anything with, and I'm not panicking, but I'm thinking, okay, well now I've got to, I've got to put them on eBay, and it's just created this whole hassle for me because I sell on Amazon. This is my, um, one of my core businesses. I don't want to sell on eBay and other, you know, I, I just want to throw it all into Amazon and get it sold. So thank goodness I got lucky. A couple weeks down the road, I thought, well, I'll try it again. I scanned it, and for some reason, I was now ungated in that brand. I don't know why. I didn't, you know, test the gods. I sent them all in as quickly as possible. They sold in Q4, and I, I did the thing, right? Uh, but that was the um, that was the big wake up call that uh, that things have changed. The Amazon landscape has changed. More inauthentic claims. Look at uh, what happened with Nike just a few months ago. These brands being completely locked down, and you have to now pay several thousand dollars just to uh, be considered for approval in these brands. And if you're left, if you've got a bunch of Nike inventory uh, or inventory that um, where a brand suddenly becomes restricted and you can't sell it and it goes into dormant reserve, or then you have to pull it back and you have to sell it and you potentially lose money on it. This is a big, big issue, and it's only going to become more and more strict, brand restricted on Amazon, because Amazon is looking for uh, brands who want to build out their brands using Amazon, not um, you know cheap fakes from not adding any value to um, what they bring to their customers, because you understand that Amazon's core uh, mission is customer-centric approach, I have raving fans, raving buyers, uh, people who love Amazon. So it's all about customer service. So they have to put these brand restrictions in place in order to bring ex excellent customer service to their customers. Okay, so seller saturation. 
there's, I don't remember the, I was just at a, a conference where they said uh, an astronomical number of people are coming in as new sellers. Now, a lot of them are going to drop off. I want to say 5,000 a year or it could have been 50,000, <laughs> but a lot, a lot of new sellers. I was shocked by the number and I didn't write it down. I apologize, but there were a lot of new sellers coming in. Now, clearly there's a huge attrition rate because you, you have to learn. Uh, how to how to sell on Amazon and not everybody is cut out for it agreed so th But there are more sellers coming in there's more saturation uh, as a wholesale sourcer and RA and OA and then you've got price tagging and people who get fearful because there's too many sellers on them, they start cutting the price and Everybody's repricer goes to match them and so all of these problems go away when you own the listing so I consider bundling a form of easy entry private label so in fact, you could even, the content in the Bundle Masterclass course can be used to build your own private label brands, even without bundling. And the things that I show you in customer-centric research, the things that you're going to learn, you can apply to creating your products on Amazon, not just bundles, but creating PL products. So there's kind of a cross-training here in the course. Um, Amazon is gonna favor private label sellers more and more because they want brand owners on their platform. And then you want to control your listing details because if if you've got um, if you you think you've locked down a wholesale account and you're the only seller and you think nobody's going to find it and then somebody runs one of the myriad of tools out there to find wholesale products they go to the same supplier and now you've got 10 20 other sellers and they're all requesting the Amazon change something in the listing that you created and you spend a lot of time optimizing that listing right if you did it right. So now they're coming in there and they're changing the listing based on maybe they're not as good uh, as at listing optimization that you are. So if you own your listing, all of this goes away. So how do we do that? So I believe that we start with niche market research, not starting with the product, but starting with understanding your market before you even look at any products. So I recommend that we look at passions and problems that people have, but large pools of people who have a like passion or a like problem. So then we conduct deep keyword research. Uh, and I like going after longer tail keywords. So for instance, if somebody is passionate about owls, owl is not a great keyword to go after because it's way too wide. But let's say they're a passionate about uh, owl Christmas ornaments. That's a deeper key, that's a longer keyword. So we can go after Owl Christmas Ornaments. And then you can even customize Owl Christmas Ornaments 2017, right? And then maybe you can source a, a product that you can customize with 2018 or 2017 on it, okay? So that's what I mean by longer tail and deeper keywords. And then I want to look for niches where I can combine high volume keywords. So what I mean by that is, uh, I call them, I call it doing mashups, right? So I find two, two um, well, uh, high volume keywords like owls and uh, dish towels. And then I'll put them together because now I've got people searching for dish towels and owls and I got longer key, longer, um, uh, long tail keywords in there. But then I also have people who will cross over between those two. Now we have to be careful because Amazon just changed their keyword. Uh, they put a new keyword restriction on and there are reasons that they did that. And I'm happy to discuss that in the Facebook group, go to facebook.com slash groups slash deal diva. And, um, we can ask that question and we'll discuss, discuss it in there. So niche market research. I'd, I'd love to hear you guys' idea, ideas on what some passionate market's about. What are you passionate about? What are your friends, your family members, uh, people you just kind of met on the street and they have this really weird, cool, funky passion, and you're like, oh, I didn't even know that existed. That happens to me all the time. It's like, I didn't know people were passionate about fill in the blank, right? So go ahead and put that in the chat. I'm going to shoot over to the chat here and see what kind of ideas we have. All right, pets. Golf pets, fishing, hot sauce. Now these are what I call the more broad keywords. Let's niche this down even more. Let's practice a little bit. Uh, what kind of fishing? Is there something specific about golf? Um, pets is a huge one, so we definitely want to narrow that down. Now what I mean by um, narrow it down is if we just take pets, we narrow it down to dogs, we narrow it down to a breed of a dog, or a size of a dog, or uh, an age of a dog. So we could have elderly chihuahuas. 
that would be a niche market, elderly chihuahuas, not just pets. Because we can't, if we, if we source something and put up a bundle for pets, there is no way you're going to get on the first page for anything just going after the keyword pets. But how about elderly chihuahuas with arthritis? You're going to own that keyword. And now you've got a bundle um, that probably not going to have a whole lot of competition in. And as long as we do our keyword research and make sure that there's enough search volume on those keywords, that's how you determine these niche, niche markets. So um, I want you to kind of scroll up and look at the different ideas in here. And based on what I just said, apply those to these ideas. So let's just take camping. So what kind of camping? RV camping, are there, how about uh, um, guys who like uh, to, uh, to hunt and they camp? Fishermen's and camping. I'm sure fishermen is not the right word. Anglers and camping. Uh, let's scroll up and how about massage? Okay, let's just um, dig deep on the massage keyword. If you try, if you created a massage bundle and you tried to rank on the first page or second page for massage bundle, it's not going to happen without throwing hundreds of, maybe even thousands of dollars over to advertising. So what you want is like, let's take, now let's do a mashup. Pet massage. So how about a dog massage bundle? Elderly dog massage bundle. Cat massage bundle. Fish massage. No, that doesn't work, right? Okay, so you, do you see what I mean by mashup? So you take two fanatical markets that are big, passionate markets, but then you niche it down by putting them together. And that's just one idea of how to find niche markets and how to bring products to those markets. So I'm just going to, so foot massage, absolutely. How about uh, elderly foot massage? I keep coming up with elderly because we, you know, I said it earlier, but how about um, people who need foot massage uh, who maybe have arthritis? Foot massage for people with arthritis. Uh, golf clubs. Now that's really, that's really, really uh, broad. So you'd want to come up with some sort of niche, like, you know the little covers that people put on their golf clubs, those little plush covers? Well, how about people who are fanatic about dogs and golf? And then we mash them up, and you've got covers that have dog heads. I've seen puppets. I actually sell puppets. Um, and I bet you I could put those puppets on golf clubs if maybe they were modified a little bit. So how can you do golf clubs for a certain pet lover, for example, just as an example? Aviation, Deborah. again, that's a really big one. So you want to um, narrow that down. How about uh, kids aviation party bundle? So how about kids whose dad's a pilot? And the kids are, you know, they're in love with airplanes and you do a party bundle for kids. Surf fishing, pit bulls. Again, that pit bulls is a really big one. So you'd want to kind of narrow that down a little bit more. But how about a birthday party for pit bulls? A little birthday pack for pit bulls. These are just some ideas. But, it, you know, when I start brainstorming, I start going over the edge brainstorming. But I wanted to give you guys some ideas uh, on, and, and I actually have a webinar um, replay where I show you three bundles I created and I do a little bit of brainstorming like this live. I want to make sure that I get through the rest of this presentation. So I'm going to stop the brainstorming here, but I want you to keep putting your ideas in the chat. And based on what I just shared with you, start kind of thinking, thinking yourself how you can create a longer tail keyword and a more niche mashup with the ideas that are in the chat. So there's 38 messages and I'm not going to read them all, but I will save it and I will uh, put it up with the, the replay so you guys can keep brainstorming. Just listen to me in the background. Okay, so I'm gonna share the screen again and we're just gonna go back. Thank you so much for being uh, so interactive. It's, it's kind of odd to stand here, sit here and talk to your computer screen if nobody talks back. So thank you for, uh, for playing in my sandbox. This is fun stuff, right? I love, you can tell I'm passionate about this. I really love this stuff. Okay, so competitive research. How do you do competitive research? So first, uh, you, you've got, let's say you've identified a niche market of, let's say uh, um, elderly dogs or, or chihuahuas. People who like chihuahuas, right? Uh, or people who like miniature poodles, not just poodles, people who like miniature poodles. They're kind of a fanatical bunch. They like putting bows in their hair and, you know, dressing them up, and they're, they're pretty fanatical. They're, they're very passionate about their miniature poodles. So now we want to find out, okay, this is, these are just based on some research and some ideas, but now I want to validate that idea. I want to see who is selling things to miniature poodle owners. I want to see what they're selling how much they're selling for. I want to see their sales volumes for different products in that niche. So I use, uh, there are a couple of different tools. I use Viral Launch is uh, a, a, a Chrome extension I use, and I use Jungle Scout, and I use Scope. There are a lot of different tools out there. There's Unicorn Smasher. Uh, there are several of them, and use whatever you're comfortable with. But these tools make it really easy to do a search like um, uh, 
toys for miniature poodle toys. And then you click one of those in your, um, in your browser and it will give you all sorts of data about that particular target market. The one from Viral Launch, uh, I think it's uh, called Competitive Intelligence or something. Um, I'll, I'll, I can um, find the link and put it on my Facebook group for you. Uh, that one actually um, has even deeper information. I really like it. I just discovered it a few months ago and it, it ranks uh, different niches for me as to whether or not I should even enter that niche, which I kind of like like it. So identify the sales volume, identify the holes in the market. So if you want to do a, um, a uh, toy bundle for the uh, niche market of toy poodles, toy poodle toys, <laughs> or what are they, miniature poodle toys, whatever they're called, and you see that there's, you know, there's some people selling um, th these kind of toys, but none of those toys have plush in them. Or uh, you start reading through that you want to look at the weaknesses in the product by looking at reviews. And you take a look at what people are complaining that that bundle or that product, it doesn't have to be a bundle, all right? What are they complaining about that that product doesn't have? And then you answer that, you address that by putting uh, something that addresses that problem into a bundle that you'll then serve to this market. And then you look for weaknesses in the listing. So somebody's selling toys for uh, small dogs and their listing is terrible. They have one picture, it's blurry, it doesn't meet Amazon guidelines. There's no lifestyle shot the product being used in a lifestyle situation. Their, um, their bullets are awful, and uh, they're still getting some sales. So if you just maybe enter that target market, go after their keywords, and by the way, to find out what keywords they're ranking for, I use a free tool, there's a free and a paid version, I have both, uh, but the, you can download the free extension Scope by Seller Labs, and you can click on that on any listing, and it will give you a list of all the keywords that that listing is ranking for, and then you can use those in your listing. It's crazy, right? I mean, the tools that are out there, make use of them. Uh, so you can go ahead and find Scope by just Googling. Google is your friend. That's another thing I like to say. Google uh, Scope by Seller Labs, and you'll find that. So um, make your bundles irresistible. I like to, my goal is to have customers who see my bundle on Amazon saying, oh, shut up and take my money. And they can't click fast enough. They can't get to that buy now button fast enough. So in order to do that, you have to create an added value experience. You can't just, here's what I, I'm begging you not to do. Throw a bunch of stuff in a poly bag that you think might sell and throw in a keychain that's completely unrelated to that because you got it for, you know, two cents uh, at a closeout just so nobody can get on your listing. And then poly bag that up and send it to Amazon and expect that anybody is going to be interested in buying it. So unfortunately, that's how people enter bundling. Um, and my approach to teaching bundling is start with the customer first. Start with the passions and their problems and then bring products that address their passions and solve their problems. So what you put in a bundle should be very, very well thought out. It's like a puzzle that you don't know what it looks like until after you put it together. Um, so you want to create an added value experience and make sure every piece you're putting in that bundle is relevant to your customer and it's going to make them say, shut up and take my money. So your initial passion and problem research are going to reveal what the customer wants and needs. And in the bundle masterclass, I give you an idea evaluation matrix and a bundle worksheet. So you can plug in different products and different pricing and different keywords to get the, the perfect mashup of bundle pieces, and then it allows you to create variations. That's a whole nother level. Variations of that same bundle. So if you had a bundle for a toy poodle's birthday party, you could have two variations, one for boys, one for girls. That's a simple, um, but th there are all different ways um, to create variations of one bundle, which allows you to buy product in bulk uh, and just change one thing in the bundle to change the variation of it. Okay, so getting a little bit deep there, sorry. I just want to, I want to make sure I cover everything on the slides. You want more information, go to bundlemasterclass.com. Uh, the enrollment is open right now and you can register right away and join the course and you start getting content uh, immediately. So all the content is up on a membership site and you'll be able to get access to all of this and more immediately. So make it unique over deliver. So don't just throw everything in a poly bag. You can go and, and get um, gift boxes with a bow on it, even uh, a, a real bow or a bow that's printed on it, and package your product so that when they get it, when they open up that Amazon box, you want their initial reaction to be a smile, not just a poly bag thrown in there, but you want to um, do a little bit extra. There's a saying, uh, the difference between ordinary 
and extraordinary is that little extra. So I encourage you when you create products to do that little extra to stand out from everybody else and to make your customers smile, to make Amazon's customers smile. And then you, in order to do this, you want to create packaging, inserts, you want to ask the right questions. Don't say, what can I throw in this bundle? The right question would be, after you understand that passionate market that you're bringing this product to, you can then ask, what else does this ideal buyer want or need? and make sure that you create a bundle around their wants or needs, not what you can get cheap at a, a dollar store, for example. Okay, so where to source? Plenty of places to source. I see people, I had somebody tell me once, um, oh yeah, it's easy to find products, but I can't find any products that will make me money, uh, to which I responded by doing a whole webinar where within just a couple of minutes I found all sorts of wholesale suppliers with great prices that we could bundle together and make money on. So uh, it's really a mindset shift that uh, sourcing is easy. It's really easy to find products for your bundles if you start with a passionate niche market first. If you get clear on what your niche market wants, then you can really hone in on finding wholesale um, or factory sources for that product. So what you want to look for is viability. So do you have long-term access to the products that you're putting in your bundle? So when you do a closeout, um, I, I buy liquidation and closeout as well, uh, but I make sure that you know I'm, if it's a product that I, I'm basing a bundle on and it's a liquidation, I try to buy everything that liquidator has, two, 3,000 products, so that I have a bundle. If they only have like 100 products, then I've done all this work on a bundle and after 100 products, I can't get that main product anymore. So I look for products that have long-term viability in terms of uh, sourcing them. Wholesale, China, India, Mexico, Thailand, uh, there's all sorts of places that you can, and you all heard of Alibaba, AliExpress, but there's made-in-india.com, that's one. All you have to do, Google is your friend, is Google wholesale for your niche market and see what comes up. So brand owners who will like white label, I actually have a brand owner uh, who will take my logo and put it on his product. And then I take that and bundle it with two other things uh, under my brand and there's my bundle and I own it. Manufacture it yourself. You can, you can, there's manufacturing in the US too. You don't have to go to China. Everybody talks about going to China, but there, uh, there's a private label manufacturer of, um, of beauty care products called Serati uh, in the US where you can private label your own brand of beauty care products and bundle things with it. Etsy, there are people at Etsy who love to make what they, what they love to make. And if you, um, you research Etsy for your passionate market and you find someone who makes a specific product and have them just change a color or put something on it, put your brand on it, uh, and tell them you need a thousand of them. And you can private label buy from a private manufacturer locally. So local stores. So here's what I like to use local for, stores for. Local stores, like go in and get bundle ideas. In fact, I just built out a soap bundle to um, just to see if it would fit in the box and to kind of visualize that I bought some bars of soap at a local store, but I made sure that that soap was uh, not private labeled by that store. So for instance, like the dollar store has its own brand. Uh, and they, if you look on the back, it's I think it's called Momentum Brands. So anything that says Momentum Brand on, you're not gonna be able to go to that website and buy that particular product. So you're stuck by sourcing it for that price at that store. So I look for product when I go into these stores that are not manufactured or not private labeled by that store. So I look on the back and I can see, okay, this was made by XYZ Soap Company in California and their website. Now I can go directly to that company and I can sign up for a wholesale account and I can source directly from them. But looking in local stores gives me those ideas uh, gives me wholesale manufacturers, wholesale suppliers right away that I can contact, and it lets me play with bundle ideas for, you know, with a half a dozen of them and just throw them up, merch, you know, merchant fulfilled to see whether or not I can get some traction in that market. So it's easy entry when you do bundles as opposed to ordering an entire container of one private label product from China. Uh, this is an easy, low risk way to get started with private label, basically. Okay, what are the elements of a winning listing? So it all starts with keyword research, and Amazon just locked down how many characters you can use in the keyword field, in the search term field, in your listing. Uh, so don't use commas, just use a space, and be sure that uh, you don't duplicate keywords. So use your main, which would be your highest uh, volume keywords, first in your title, 
then in your bullet points or your feature bullets, then in the description in that order, and then um, put everything else in the keyword field or in the uh, search term field in the back end. Be sure not to, uh, you want to really utilize that space judiciously because there's not a lot of it. You don't want to keyword stuff. So make sure that you're not duplicating the same keyword eight times all over the place because that's real estate for other keywords. So photos, 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 I can't say this enough. We have an entire three lessons on doing photos, um, editing photos, creating like a, uh, uh, an entire, like how do you stage your photos um, so that you convert more on your Amazon listing and also lifestyle shots. So we have an entire three lessons. Um, actually two of the lessons are done by a photographer himself. We interviewed him in the Bumble Masterclass. Uh, so photos are huge. You have to be able to show the front, the back, the little bits and pieces, uh, a lifestyle photo of the product being used, the bundle being used, maybe in multiple, um, multiple uses. So bullets and featured, description. Answer the why. I like to use my description not just to say, this is what it is, buy it, buy it please. I use it to tell a story. So let's say we talk about the soap bundle. Soap bundle is probably going to be with uh, three different flavors of soap, plus a loofah brush, and then I'll put a custom piece in there on 25 ways to relax, or uh, 25 ways to have clear skin. And then I'll tell a story about what your life is like when, you have, when you're relaxed, you have clear skin, um, you, know, you take 10 minutes a day to uh, luxuriate in a bath with your favorite oatmeal soap bar. And I'll, tell a, I'll use the description area to uh, tell a story, but incorporate my keywords in that story. It's a, bit of a, it's a bit of a skill, but you can learn how to do that. And I show you that in the Bumble Masterclass. So uh, search terms in the back end, of course, we just talked about that. You want to make sure that your keywords, um, 250 characters, and there are tools you can use, free tools that you can just paste your keywords in to see how many characters it is. And again, don't use commas, just use a space between every keyword. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back over here to the chat and uh, see if uh, I've got any questions in here before I move on. I'm going to show you my approach to bundling. Okay. Hi, everybody. Okay, codes for small senior dogs. Oh, I love that. Kids building toys, steel black garlic press. I would steal, steer clear of the garlic press. I wouldn't be, um, I would be doing you a disservice if I told you it was okay to, <laughs> to go source garlic presses. I don't care if they're steel and black or not. So that's kind of oversaturated. And everybody uses garlic presses in their private label training, so it's totally oversaturated. So, uh, lab golf, co excellent content from the start. Oh, thank you, Matt. I appreciate that. So there you go, foot massage for plantar fasciitis. I'm sure, I don't know the spelling either or even how to pronounce it, but that is a, uh, a great niche, massage for elderly, elderly pets with arthritis. You guys are coming up with some really, really, really great, um, great niche market ideas. Thank you for sharing those. So I'm going to go back in, and uh, remember, I promised you something for free. It's coming up. So some of you, I'm really surprised that nobody has asked in the chat yet, well, what about UPC codes? How many people, by a raise of your hand in the chat, say, me, me, me? How many people are wondering about the UPC code issue when you have bundles? What do you do? It used to be you had you could just you know go on eBay and buy a bunch of, buy a bunch of UPC codes, right? Uh, and then they changed it where you can't. You can only go to this one place to buy, you, that's right, the GS1s, and they're super, super, super expensive, right? So uh, you own a bunch of regular gray. You couldn't create one even with an exception request. Okay, so they changed earlier this year, and now it's super, super, super easy. It's called a, um, G, a GTI ex exemption. So uh, I've created a, um, I've created a, a little PDF. It's just a couple of pages that walks you through how to do a GTI and exemption for all of your bundles. Uh, and even if you haven't created a bundle yet, what you do is submit this spreadsheet that they have. Uh, with a bundle idea and a, a potential photograph of the bundle, and then shoot, they have a drop down in this uh, in this document where you choose what category that you want that bundle to be in. And the trick is to create a bundle concept for every single category that you are ungated for, and submit this GTI and exemption because the GTI and exemption they give you is not for specific bundles; it's for specific categories. So now you can create, once they approve, and the approval comes really fast. For me, it was like an hour and a half, and I got the approval for my entire spreadsheet. Now, it might be a little slower because we're going to Q4, but get it done now. The exemption lasts for 90 days, 
So get it, get it in now because we're in September, October, November, December. Uh, we're there. So um, I'm going to give you that for free. I'm going to give you a link. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the bundle masterclass, and then I'll give you the link so you can download the instructions uh, for the GTI and exemption with links to all of the documents. And uh, hang in there. We're, I'm going to scooch over here and tell you a little bit about the bundle masterclass. So the bundle masterclass I created, I realized I was doing bundles a whole lot differently from most people. So May of this year, I conceptualized the bundle masterclass and I spent a significant amount of time putting together really deep content. In fact, this is quasi a private label course um, with the equivalent of depth of content that a lot of these courses that are selling for like $2,000 have, but they don't even cover bundling. They just cover private labeling. So a lot of, the, I actually, uh, I've been to China. I went in April. Uh, I, I went to six trade shows. I sourced from China. Uh, I bring in less than container loads, private label products. I'm starting my own brands. So I'm kind of ahead of the curve. Um, in addition to doing bundling, I incorporate bundle into the private label part. So I figured not a lot of people were doing it the way I was doing it. And I figured I would put everything into this, this long course. Uh, there's like 40 plus, now there's even more because I added more content and I keep adding more content and I launched it in May. So you're going to learn how to identify passions and problems like we just did. Identify your competition, build and evaluate bundles, identify suppliers, create a custom piece. That's something we didn't get into too much here, but creating a custom piece to put in your bundles is what locks down your bundle so nobody else can, um, can hop on that bundle. Let's say they found your wholesale sources for every single piece in your bundle. For example, um, I sell puppets. So I have a puppet, a six piece set, and in this set I put an adoption certificate with the name of each, so I put like, you know, name your, uh, name your puppets, and there's six different style animals of puppets. And I created this custom piece, um, ad an adoption certificate that a kid can hang on the wall. So that's an example of one kind of custom piece you can add in your bundle. And then you can, you wanna test, uh, we'll talk about how to test your bundles, test market them and then market on your own. So you can market using offline, you can market using uh, local Facebook groups, you can market locally and drive traffic to Amazon to test it out. You can do Amazon pay-per-click, Facebook ads, Pinterest, and actually there are lessons on Pinterest and Facebook uh, advertising inside of the Bundle Masterclass. And then you can drive your own traffic from your own website if you wanted to, from Google. Uh, and by the way, Amazon loves it when you send them your own traffic, because they see it as them getting a potential new Amazon Prime customer for free. So they'll, they'll give you some love on your listings from what I understand. There's no way for me to validate this, of course, because Amazon won't tell us their algorithms. But they like it when you drive your own traffic. And then you want to figure out how to automate and delegate this. So I give you a, um, a, a bundle journal so that you can capture all these amazing ideas you're going to start generating as you go through the Bundle Masterclass, but you're not going to be able to action all of them if you're working alone. So it's important to know how to automate and delegate that, and uh, we've got an entire lesson on um, automating and delegating your Amazon business in general inside the Bundle Masterclass. And then you want to lather, rinse, repeat, and just keep building up your, your inventory of uh, bundles and private label products. So what are the, uh, sorry, that was the last one. Here we go, bundle master. Oh, so here's the outline for the uh, bundle ma master class. So uh, this is the third time I've opened it up. And each time I bring people in, uh, I add more content. So when people keep asking the same questions, like we just added a, um, a lesson on, oh, I haven't uploaded it yet. If you're in the bundle master class, I just did it this week. Um, I did a lesson on vertical bundles. So we talked about how we can take a bundle and create different versions of it. I, I created a lesson on that and I'll be adding that up to the Bundle Masterclass. So I keep adding more content and uh, by the way, you get lifetime access to the course and you're going to learn about everything we talked about in this webinar and then some. So the course structure, I do videos like this where it's a PowerPoint and it's, it's structured and then I give a lesson at the end or I give an exercise at the end that you can work through and there's checklists, there's slide presentations. I do show and tell videos where it's like you're looking over my shoulder as I'm on Google and I'm, I'm on the internet showing you this is how to do this. And then we go down the rabbit holes. We do a lot of free, free style brainstorming where you'll give me some bundle ideas and I'll just get on the internet and I'll show you this is how I do it. This is how I find niche, passionate ideas, products, suppliers, uh, keywords, and you get to look over my shoulder as basically I build my business. Interviews with industry leaders because I can't possibly know it all. 
I, I don't I don't even pretend to know it all. So I partner with industry leaders like uh, Seller Labs, Jeff Cullen Scope. They have two entire lessons in here on how to you how to do keyword research and how to optimize your listings. We have the photographer in here, Ian Bauer, who created the the VA course is in this group. Um, who, they've all created content bringing their specialized knowledge into this group for us. And then we have life, you have lifetime access to all of the current and future content, a private Facebook group where we do a lot of cool stuff that, um, uh, that doesn't end up in the course. And then the revised and updated, or doesn't end up on my other Facebook groups, I'm sorry. I always update and printable bundle journal idea. So as you're out and about or you're hanging out, you know, waiting for your child after school or at a sports game or something, you've got a bundle uh, idea journal that you can just start generating ideas as you look around at these passionate markets that surround you every single day. Okay, you also get a trade show calendar, th th 3,500 different niche trade shows, where you can go to their website, and a lot of times they'll have their vendor list with contact information of wholesale suppliers. H 100 niche markets cheat sheet to get you started if you're having trouble getting traction on thinking of passionate markets. 200 wholesale sources, and I keep adding more. I just added one today to the Facebook group that I found accidentally, because I was looking for stickers with zombies on them for one of my bundles. And, uh, and I found this site that does these stickers and custom stickers and all these really cool doodads, and I posted that in the Facebook group. Uh, niche market validation checklist, product criteria checklist. So basically everything that I use in my business creating bundles and also in private labeling comes is in the Bundle Masterclass. So here what some of my students are saying. I'm sure you guys recognize some of these names. Anita is actually in the webinar. Give a shout out to her in the, in the chat there, Anita Breeze. And uh, Maria Tori, Jerry Mills, he's a private labeler. Uh, Debbie Tremblay, these are, these are some of my students in the Bundle Masterclass. And some of the things they've been saying about the Bundle Masterclass. I appreciate all of you, by the way. Thank you so much for the kind words. Um, it really, it's, it's really great to know that I can bring value and uh, help you guys build your businesses and make more money. Because, you know, I do, I do pretty good. I, I do pretty good on Amazon. And uh, uh, I've got a couple of businesses and I'm just blessed that I have the freedom and the income that I have. And my goal was to be able to share. I'm ahead of the curve um, from, from some people. I, I get that. And there's people ahead of the curve from me. So be able to bring uh, a lot of this value to people who are where I was two, three, four years ago, uh, is, is a, a real blessing for me that I'm able to do that. So thank you for your kind words and these testimonials, everybody. So the cost of education, I've been selling online since two, wait, 1996, but then I started uh, seriously in 2002 with, um, uh, building brands. I'm an active Amazon seller, so I'm not, I don't just, you know, sell, sell digital products. Uh, I, I do what I say and I'm in the trenches with you. So when something happens on Amazon, I can, um, add new content to the bundle masterclass.com to address that, address whatever the changes are. I've invested to date this year, actually it's this year, not two years, $32,000 in my education, which in includes, uh, I just came back from two back-to-back -back conferences. I spoke at Retail Global a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I just got back from content and commerce, and I went to China uh, in April, and I might go again in October for a short trip, definitely going back next April. So I invest a lot of money, and I've, I'm also in a coaching program, a high-end, high-price coaching program, for um, doing off Amazon advertising and building email lists to bring people um, into my Amazon listings, but also start building niche email lists. And that's something that we'll talk about in the course a little bit too, and I'll start bringing that education to you as I get it. And then 